viewers today we will study about carbohydrates in carbohydrates we will study its definition d and l sugar aldose and ketose so we know that carbohydrates are widely abundant in nature and you can found it in food product fruits wood of plants and in our dna also so simplest carbohydrates is glucose and when you see the formula of glucose it is c6h12o6 so if you can arrange this formula you can arrange it like c6 in bracket you can write it h2o6 here you can see it is hydrated form of carbon so that's why name come carbohydrates so here you can see six carbon atom are attached with six water molecules means carbon are hydrated so that's why carbohydrate name comes but when later structure elucidation happened it was found that it is not hydrated form of carbon but several polyhydroxyl groups are attached with carbon so it is present in the form of polyhydroxyaldehydes and polyhydroxy ketone but carbohydrate name persisted so we know that our tree and plant convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose in their leaves by the process of photosynthesis so this is photosynthesis process where carbon dioxide react with water in presence of sunlight and give you glucose and glucose is the source of energy so when you classify carbohydrate you classify it into monosaccharide and uh, disaccharide and polysaccharide so monosaccharides are the simple form of sugar while disaccharide and polysaccharides are complex sugars so further we classified monosaccharide into aldoses and ketoses so aldo words represent aldehyde and keto words represent ketones so sugar component containing aldehyde groups are called aldoses so here you can see glucose in glucose there is aldehyde group present so you can call it aldoses and fructose this fructose contain carbonyl group okay so this is ketosis and also we sometimes represent it tri tetra penta hexa or hepta so this represent the number of carbon present for example here you can see at first position there is aldehyde group present and it is five carbon chain so it is aldopentosis and here you can see there is carbonyl group present in second position and there are six carbon present in the chain so this is ketohexosis glucose fructose sucrose mannose so os represent carbohydrate so now we will study d and l sugar in nature the simplest carbohydrate present is glyceraldehyde and this glyceraldehyde is present in the form of positive glyceraldehyde what is the meaning of positive here so this glyceraldehyde rotate plain polarized right in the right direction means clockwise so that's why positive sign come and the compound which rotate plain polarized light in right direction they are called dextro rotatory compound so this d represent d in glyceraldehyde so it is also called d glyceraldehyde or positive glyceraldehyde so if your glyceraldehyde rotate the plane polarized light in the left direction or anti clockwise then it is called negative glyceraldehyde and when it rotate in left direction so the name come levo rotatory levo rotatory glyceraldehyde so here we can call it l glyceraldehyde but in nature only positive glyceraldehydes are present so whatever natural sugars present in nature when they degraded they gives you d glyceraldehyde so for example this is the glucose this is naturally occurring glucose when you remove 
carbon from this glucose one by one you will get glyceraldehyde and this glyceraldehyde will be deglyceraldehyde and it will rotate plane polarized light into right direction or clockwise direction so it is easy to represent this glucose as a d glucose so now the problem arises with synthetic sugar when you were removing carbon from synthetic sugar you were getting mixture of d and l glyceraldehyde now it was getting difficult to represent d sugar or l sugar to this kind of sugar which were giving mixture of d and l glyceraldehyde so fisher rosen of convention was saying that you have to give d designation to those sugar which were giving only positive glyceraldehyde but now with synthetic sugar you were getting a mixture of d and l glyceraldehyde so what to do here in this kind of compound so for example you can see in this molecule your this hydroxyl group which is far from aldehyde group is present on right direction which was matching with the d glyceraldehyde structure you can see here in d glyceraldehyde or positive glyceraldehyde your hydroxyl was present on right direction so here also in this ribose your hydroxyl group which is far from aldehyde group is present on right direction then here you have to give name d ribose so in d glucose your this hydroxyl group so this hydroxyl group is present on carbon which is chiral in nature and far from this aldehyde group okay so this hydroxyl group is present on right direction which was matching with d glyceraldehyde so you have to give d glucose and similarly its name is d fructose okay so here d means we are just giving the name it is no meaning that uh, it gives you direction of rotation of plane polarized light for example d erythrose we have given d name because hydroxyl is group present is on right direction but this compound can rotate plane polarized light anti clockwise that's why you are getting negative sign here similarly d thiose your hydroxyl group which is present on this chiral carbon which is far from this aldehyde group the hydroxyl group on this carbon carbon is present on right direction which is matching with d glyceraldehyde so you have to give name d thiose but this compound can rotate plane polarized light in anti clockwise direction now d and l it don't have any connection with the plane polarized light it is just used for giving the name of sugar okay now we will talk about configuration of aldoses so first we will talk about aldo tetrose aldo tetrose has two chiral center so if it has two chiral center then there are four enantiomer or you can call two pair of enantiomer and its formula is 2 to the power n n represent number of chiral carbon so if there is two chiral carbon 2 to the power n n is 2 so 2 to the power 2 is equal to 4 means four enantiomeric structure are present and two pair of enantiomer you can say okay so these four enantiomeric structure two of them are d sugar and two of them are l sugar so d sugar are d erythrose and d thiose and l sugars are l erythrose and l thiose so in nature only d form of sugars are present so here i have given only the d form of the structure of this sugar so this is d erythrose okay and this is d thiose so now you have to draw the structure of l erythrose and l thiose now in aldopentoses so in aldopentoses you have five carbon and your one carbon is aldehyde 
So one, two, three, four, five. How many car chiral carbons are present? One, two, three. So two to the power three. How many enantiomeric structures are present? Eight. And how many enantiomeric pairs are present? Four. So these are four enantiomer structure: D ribose, D arabinose, D xylose, and D lyxose. And this another enantiomers are L ribose, L arabinose, L xylose, and L lyxose. So I have given only the D form of the sugar. Okay. So now with aldohexose, how many chiral carbons are present? 1, 2, 3, 4 and 2 to the power 4 is equal to 16. So 16 structures are possible with aldohexose. So here I have given only D form of the structure which is D allose, D altrose, D glucose, D mannose, D gulose, D adose, D galactose and D tellose. So from D glyceraldehyde you are getting two structure d and d 3 You have to add just one carbon with hydroxyl on same one side and one time hydroxyl on another side. Then you have to again add one carbon with hydroxyl group, one hydroxyl on same side and this hydroxyl on another side and same you have to repeat it here. So you will get all your structure when you add one carbon with hydroxyl group and hydroxyl group on same side, hydroxyl group on other side. Now with ketosis same thing happened. This is dihydroxyacetone. You have added one chiral carbon here. So you will get the erythrulose structure. Now you will add one carbon with hydroxyl group on same side you will get D ribulose and hydroxyl on another side you will get D xylulose. So here you can see hydroxyl on same side D ribulose and here you can see hydroxyl on another side which is D xylulose. Now again you have to add one carbon with hydroxyl on same side you will get D cycos and hydroxyl on other side you will get D fructose. And here you have to do same thing again. Your hydroxyl on one on this side, you will get D sorbose. You can see hydroxyl on this side, and one time hydroxyl on another side, you will get D tectose. So you will get all the structure. So, guys, I will finish basic introduction about carbohydrates, T and L form of uh, sugar, and aldoses and ketosis here. So next class we will study cyclic form of sugar. Thank you for watching the video.